Thanks. Hey guys, how are you doing? Let's talk about the race. I'm running for United States Senate in the Republican primary uh, against uh, a number of people who are up here today. Uh, and, you know, I know you listened to the Democrats earlier, and this is an opportunity for us to make clear the differences between what we represent and what the Democrats represent. I'm sure all the Democrats that are here today are great people. Um, economic growth, which will allow you guys to have jobs and live the American dream, does not come from government. Government can give you nothing. It can only take things away and then redistribute those things to other people. The only way for you to live the American dream is for government to get out of your way. Low taxes, less regulation. That leads to economic growth, economic liberty, and job creation. And that's what the Republican Party and my platform stand for. National security. Do not listen to people telling you that we need to pull out of Iraq and Afghanistan. It is a huge mistake. Afghanistan is right on the border of Pakistan. Pakistan is a nuclear power. Iran is currently trying to manufacture weapons-grade uranium, right? That's a big issue. We're trying to stop them from doing it. But if Afghanistan fails, then we don't have to worry about Iran becoming a nuclear power on their own. They'll just go and buy a loose nuke from Al-Qaeda or the Taliban influences in Afghanistan. So when a Democrat comes up and says we need to pull out of Afghanistan, or the president waits 90 days to send our troops there, they're not interested in national security. They're interested in appeasing an anti-war, anti-military, left-wing base. It would be terrific, terrific if you really took a hard look at these positions. This is a formative time in your life. And if you'd love to come join our campaign, we're happy to have you. Patrick Hughes for Senate.com. But regardless of whether you choose me or one of my Republican uh, opponents or any of the Democrats, think for yourselves. Look at the issues and decide what you believe in, and then run with that and stick to it. And don't let anybody move you off those things. And that's how you'll become what you want to be someday. That's how you'll get out of whatever circumstance you're in now and live the American dream in the way that, you know, thankfully I've been able to do over the last several years. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm happy to answer any questions. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. you said you support the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, but, and I would agree with that that we need to maintain presence there, but how would you, how can you, how would you say that the U.S. government can compensate for the massive economic cost of maintaining that, of maintaining the presence over there? Well, the first thing that we could do is uh, uh, cut taxes immediately. That's the first thing we can do. Right, eliminate capital gains taxes, uh, or, or at least freeze them for a period of time. Does everybody know, does everybody know the difference between a capital gains tax and ordinary income tax? Yeah. It's complicated, the reality of it is, your certain income gets taxed at one level, but then it gets taxed again through capital. If you invest that income into capital, then it gets taxed again. One of our economic problems is that we're taxed too heavily at the capital level, there's not enough investment in our country, and as a result, we're suffering through a terrible economic recession. So, don't pass the health care bill, don't pass cap and trade, don't do another stimulus, and lower taxes, and over time, we'll get out of this economic mess. That'll help grow the economy and help offset the costs uh, of the war. But the reality of it is, look, there is no economic cost, and I want to make this clear, no economic cost that should not be paid to stop what is the existential threat of our lifetime. What type of school system do you want your children to attend? For example, public or private, and why? My, I have three kids, um, nine, seven, and four, and they attend private uh, Catholic high school, or grade school uh, in my area. I'm a product of, like I said, Chicago public schools, and then I went to a Catholic high school. My, the public schools in, in my area uh, are terrific. They really are. Uh, they do a great job. And there are many great public schools across the way. Why do all my kids go to Catholic school? They go to Catholic school because I believe that they get the best combination of uh, education on issues like math and science and other things, while at the same time being allowed to study the Bible and Christ's teachings and the teachings of the church, which are really, really important to me. And I think it's such a good question. I, I, you know, we, we live in an affluent neighborhood now, so we have the opportunity to pay property taxes and still make the choice of sending our kids to, to private school. And years and years and years of hard work have allowed us to do that. But everyone should have that choice. 
If there's a bad public school in your neighborhood, instead, you know, we're paying taxes, we're taxpayers. There should be opening you know, more charter schools, there should be vouchers, there should be more school choice so parents and students can decide for themselves where they should go. And this idea that the government shouldn't be helping fund private Christian or Catholic or Jewish or Muslim schools is wrong. That's not, that's not what is intended by the First Amendment. It's not what's intended by the Establishment Clause in the Constitution. And so we should encourage more school choice and opportunity for everyone.